Drive 50 minutes north of Grand Rapids and you'll find one of the largely undiscovered hockey hotbeds in the state. On the campus of Ferris State University, hockey is a way of life. Whether it be a game of pickup hockey on the pond or the hockey that goes long into the night where players hope to hang on to the game that threatens to escape them with each subsequent shift. On Friday and Saturday nights between October and March, Big Rapids turns its collective eye on the ice arena. The intimate confines with the low-hanging rafters and the rabbit dog pound shape the stage for Ferris hockey. separate Big Rapids from the Grand Ice Palace known as Joe Louis Arena. The sky blue rafters hold a storied tradition that until this year has seldom included the Bulldogs. NCAA's finest in-season tournaments 49 times before. Now, the 50th installment of the Great Lakes Invitational will include Ferris State Hockey. We're talking Ferris State Hockey on the Breakaway Talk radio show, the Bulldogs, with the invite to the GLI, the 50th annual invite, one of the greatest tournaments in all of college hockey. During that commercial break, I was thinking about this, and about Ferris State players. They're all home now. All of them have flown home or drove home, wherever they're from, all across the continent. I left at 4 a.m., so that kind of sucked, but uh, I came to see Chicago, and then, uh, yeah, now you're in Grand Rapids. So. Be back. Welcome to the Gerald Ford International Airport. Federal regulations require that all passengers post the controller bag in the to prevent transporting dangerous items not from knowledge. Do not transport all items of someone you do not know. We ask that you report any. What color was the outside the case? Uh, it's not in a case, it's just two, two sticks, yeah. They're taped together. In the worst case scenario, they would leave it in, the, in uh, tomorrow morning. Yeah, okay, sounds good. Okay. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Well, the airline forgot my hockey sticks, so it's a good trip back to the U.S. Obviously, uh, being a goalie, they're a little out there. Um, you know, anyone who stands in front of a net every single day and has hundreds of thousands of pucks shot at them isn't the uh, most sane person in the world. But CJ has uh, quite confidence. I mean, most kids, you know what you're going to get when you talk to him, when you meet him with CJ. He's a little more quiet. Uh, but once you get to know him, he's pretty. Uh, he can be pretty funny. Uh, he likes his zombies. He likes his aliens. So he's into that extraterrestrial stuff, which most people aren't these days. So. Uh, every once in a while you can kind of catch him dreaming about UFOs or sleeping with his eyes open like that, but uh, most times he's, he's pretty normal, pretty easy to hang out with. I think we'd have to dig through a lot of ice and snow. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Especially in Yukon, dude. How much is there? We got tons of snow here. How much is up there? It's probably like 50 times the amount of snow. Whatever, I got a in shovel. Yukon? I got a you got a shovel. I got a shovel. I got a pickaxe, I'll bring some dynamite. Lots of gold. You're not gonna find. find you're not gonna find gold. You have to jump out of the plane on the way to Fairbanks. No, we're just gonna find a river somewhere in Anchorage. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna, what river is not gonna be frozen in the middle of January in Anchorage? We'll figure it out. So we have a shovel and a pickaxe for us. <laughs> you are that guy. Yeah, it's gonna you're find bread. a bunch of gold. How good is it though? 
Uh, it's always nice to come back and see all the boys. Um, we're apart for about 10 days, so so being around somebody or some of these guys all the time, uh, you get a good connection with them, and it's it was good to see that everyone had a good Christmas break. And everyone got back here safely. Uh, well, it's, a, it's an unbelievable tournament. I grew up playing here. Grew up, I maybe went to every single uh, GLI, yeah, like almost all of them. Um, it, it was, it's like a dream come true. All my family from Colorado is coming, all my friends. You know, it's a special, it's a special tournament. With, you know, I got friends on other teams. They're pretty, they're pretty pumped about it too. Um, it's just an honor to play in this in the 50th anniversary. You know, it's a special, it's a special moment for not, not me, but all my teammates and. And I know this is something big. And all, when you can play from 15 minutes away from your house, it's always nice. So more people can come. You know, grandmas, grandpas who can't really make it out to a game, they can come watch you, and, and it's special. And you know, I, I just can't wait to play tonight. The amount of history and stuff in this building is unbelievable. I know those those first few laps when uh, when we got to skate around and stuff, just looking up at the banners and see guys like I mean Nick Lidstrom, Steve Eiserman, Terry Sawchuk, all those guys. There's so much history and such a big legacy behind this arena, and it's it's an un unbelievable feeling just to get the chance to skate out here. What you thought of Um, it kind of blows you off your feet at first because you see all the banners, everything they have that, that they have uh, won through the uh, Detroit Red Wings, through that great program. Um, also walking in that tournament and knowing the uh, mindset you need to have and the intensity of the tournament coming up. Um, I think that we uh, will be ready to go and you know we want to make a good name for ourselves. I mean Joel is just it's unreal, like it's just a classic, um, classic barn that you always uh, watch the Red Wings when you're growing up, and it's awesome to be a part of that. So it's really fun. Alright, we've got everybody in here. Alright fellas, no matter how good a condition you are, when you come off a break, and everybody knows you get gas a little quicker, make sure these shifts stay nice and tight. You know when it's time to come off, get it, come off, make sure you're making the right changes too. Other than that, boys, have a good time out there. This is a lot of fun. It's great to be involved in this thing. Let's put our best foot forward. Here.
primed and ready. This is a great environment, and it's great to see these two teams that have played for an awful long time. Ferris State, of course, in its 40th year of having a college hockey program, 37th as a D1 team, and the first time ever they get to play in the GLI. It's a big thrill for all the fans. Chef leans in against the blow. 18 players from the state of Michigan have watched this tournament growing up, and we're underway. GLI, here we go. It's going to be a tight game. This is a come down probably the one more game. 20 had the one. I mean, this in particular, those were, those one was four and four. We got guys coming to the bench all of a sudden. It's turned, you know, we can't have that. You got to, you know, I don't mind you trying to make a move, especially if you're tighter in on net. But if it's up around the blue, even top of the circles, you got to find a better, you know, move one way, go around them, get work yourself in. But, and then it's also, you got to have a, a hockey sense about you. If it's late in the shift and you know your landmates are going off and you're one against a, a number of guys, you're better off risking it on net, letting it kick off to a corner. You get off and let us get our troops back on the ice. again guys I mean there's only so many grade 8 chances you get in the game like this and when you get those grade 8 chances you got you got to cash in you got to at least hit the net to create some more things Um, I don't think in terms of the game itself today we weren't poor at all. I, I don't know that we were great, but we weren't we weren't poor. Uh, so I mean nothing to be too ashamed of other than the fact that you know we got this tightened up a little bit more uh, and obviously no score, but we'll deal with that in the morning. Alright, boys. As the sun closes its eyes, I'm trying not to lose any sleep. You know, he, he's, he's more of a, um, a leader type figure in the locker room. He does like to joke with the guys every once in a while, coming down, sit in, sit in the locker room, sit next to you in the stall, and you know, have a laugh with you. I think the other day he showed us a clip on, on video when we're all taking it real serious, and he kind of lightened up the mood because he showed a clip of two kids eating, going for a pizza, and they were just going to town on this pizza. He's like, we need to play hockey like that and everybody's dying laughing. So in the locker room, he's a good guy. I think the, the most we are separated by him by w would be our choice of music. So I, th I don't think he likes our music, but other than that, I think he's just another one of the guys, but more of the, the leader in the locker room. know it and I know it, but I'll tell you this right now, this is a good game to play in, in terms of our, our team and where we want to be. Tech is a good team. I have a ton of respect for where they're at right now with their team. But you know what? We're a good team too. It's going to have to be tough. we got to go through them. we got to go through Minnesota State and Bowling Green. That's what we got to do. And all three of them are carbon copies. So we might as well get it. We might as well start today on that truck knowing what we got to do. You know what? And it still may be 1-1 going into the third. 
I mean, it's tough hockey. It's good hockey. It's a, it's, it's American League level hockey is what it is. And you know what? We got to be, we got to bring ourselves up to that level where we're successful in games like this. So this is an exciting game. You know, you got to bring it tonight, boys. You have to. night afternoon for Ferris State a bad bounce to knee for the Huskies running up in front shot score Shorty by the Huskies their third of the year back door of the play just off the stick of Robertson in the far corner Robertson retrieves it no passes to the blue line and Lowney on a drive he scores Ferris State's first the GOI Lowney from the point Dogs get on the board in the second period It's a whole different determination here, which I'm fine with. I mean, I'm happy with it. We're getting a lot of chances. Don't change a thing. Don't worry about the scoreboard right now. Don't worry about it, because I like the mentality right now. I really do. In overtime, yes, sir. Denise. Wilson shoots the Short side! What a snipe! And this is the type of goal that drives coaches crazy. Two years and one day from the last goal I had scored. So anytime you uh, you don't score for that kind of length of period, it's it's tough. But to get that goal at that time of the game, that was huge. And I mean, even more so, just trying to help the team out in that situation. Yeah, after that goal, after you scored, um, it seemed like everyone was kind of up on the bench and uh, more confident. Even when we were down four, I think uh, the team had a positive attitude. Everyone was uh, ready to go. So uh, it really helped. That will be the end of the Great Lakes Invitational for Ferris State. The Bulldogs unsuccessful in Detroit.
disappointed, sound like a broken record, disappointed with the results uh, in the game, but um, certainly not disappointed in the effort tonight. I thought the guys played really hard. Um, after It's a quick turnaround, too, uh, playing the late game last night, having to play um, the afternoon. Sparamis Meliora, Resurgent Cineribus. Translated from the Latin, we hope for better things, it shall rise from the ashes. An all too fitting motto for not only the city of Detroit, but the Bulldogs themselves. A stumble in the spotlight provided by the Joe Louis Arena only fuels the fire beneath this team. Every ship from here on out means that much more. In the desperate struggle for conference dominance, Ferris leaves Detroit not with their eyes on the ground, but on the road to Boston. Thank you.